G'day guys, welcome to J-Man Speaks. Today I have a video to talk through with you by a creator called John Griffin. Uh, go and check out his channel and I've also linked the original video in a description. So go over and uh, support him. Uh, so full credit to him for creating this original content which we're commenting on today. So the title of the video is called The Lies Society Tells Us About Women. And the reason why I chose this video because it was very telling and it does cover a lot of the points that I also talk about in many of my other videos. So I think this one would be really great value for you guys watching at home. It might be a bit of a longer one because I do think I will watch the majority of this video and comment on the majority of this video. So guys, grab a drink and uh, yeah, let's have a let's have a chat about it. Someone's got to put a stop to it. This whole thing has just gotten out of hand. The lies that we're told about women and the mythology surrounding them and their characteristics is just a pure fiction. And we as a society have been sold this idea for about the last 50 or 60 years that women, for some reason, have these characteristics that are so amazing and beyond reproach that they are to be believed and to be favored under almost all circumstances. Now I, as a man who was married to one for 20 years, I have fathered two, I have cousins, work, people that I've worked with for years, friends, lovers. In the last 60 years, I've probably known a thousand women and I have yet to meet one that lives up to the billing that we've been sold as a society. There you go. I think that's a very, really good point that he makes. And I'll, I'll sort of rewind a little bit to the point that he was making uh, around the propaganda, I would call it, propaganda machine uh, that, that has a real big sales pitch um, for women being sugar and spice and all things nice. Guys, as you know, and those of you who are new to the channel and don't know me, um, I have been married, divorced, just like John. I was only married a few years. I wasn't married 20. Um, so he's definitely earned his stripes, I can tell you that much. Uh, but I've womanized uh, my whole life, apart from being married and in a couple of long-term relationships, my whole life, I'm almost 40 years old, I have womanized and I can absolutely endorse this video that women are not sugar and spice and all things nice. I've seen the worst of them and I've seen a lot of behaviors and common behaviors in a lot more women than what you would think do this sort of thing that has just changed my view on the majority of women forever. Now there are some outliers, but if I go back and think about all of the different women I've ever gone out with, um, dated, put in the back of the VN Calais behind the cricket ground, you know, there's a lot and it's not a brag. It's just a lot. Um, it's, you know, 15 odd solid years of doing that sort of stuff. There'll be two or three that I'll remember as being someone where I thought, yeah, I might have I might have fucked up there and, you know, not pursued that any further or not acted the right way or with the best intentions. Two or three out of thousands, as he said, um, thousands of uh, a thousand women he might have come into contact with. I've been in contact with thousands talking, dating, uh, rooting them, whatever it is. I'm not saying I've rooted a thousand women. So today I'm going to give you my rant on why and what we've gotten wrong about women. So if I were an alien from another planet and I were coming to Earth and trying to understand our civilization, I would be very, very confused because if I were to observe our modern media, our TV, our social media, our movies, our children's television programs, I would think that women are very clearly the superior gender, that they are a special class of people, and they just basically don't do any, any harm or any pro have any problems, so they don't create any, any discord in their lives. Yet, for some reason, in practice, it's quite the opposite. One of the characteristics that is assigned to women that it seems to be universally accepted is empathy. And I cannot think of a bigger lie than this one. And I think this one is so critical, that's why I put it first, is it's, 
it's so um, misleading. It leads you to believe that women have some special innate ability to pick up on the emotions and the situation, the experiences of another person, internalize that in some way, and turn that into some kind of positive action that might help this other person. That is complete bullshit. I have not seen anything like that. Women are the most selfish, self-serving things I have ever met. I'm not going to say all of them, okay? I never go in absolutes, so I'm sure he's not also going in absolutes. He's making a point. Majority are, okay? Guys, I'm sure a lot of you have found my content or guys who watch John's content, you've found that because it resonates with you because you've had a similar experience to both of us, being that you've been uh, married or in long-term relationships. You've gone through the whole cycle. You've seen what waits for you on the other side of that deal. Now, for guys who have been through it, and have had a bad experience, which is the majority of men who go through divorces have a bad experience. And I know there are guys out there who will say, well, no, she was really good and, you know, it was amicable and blah, blah, blah. I know it happens, but that's the minority. Think about how empathetic a woman is to you. A man who she said that she will love and cherish for life. A man who may have sacrificed his own happiness, his own wants, needs to support a family and support that woman. Right? by marrying her and, and growing a family. Think about how empathetic she is on the way out. Okay, On the way out, these women turn from the woman you knew into a, a monster. They don't care about you. The thing about, and they're one of the biggest pills, and I, I, you should almost rename this video to the biggest red pills men learn. Okay, The biggest red pill that men get is seeing that whole change of character of a person and you truly see the kind of person that you were married to through the way that you were treated. You were nothing more at the end of it all, when it's all said and done. Sure, there were good times while you were in it, but when it's all said and done, you're nothing more than a pay packet. You're nothing more than a capital source to be plundered. Okay, that's why family law is so big. Do you think it's men taking women to family court? Uh, to go through that whole process. So guys in the comments, if you've been through an experience where a woman has just changed your whole life view based on the way she's behaving versus what you've been sold, put it in the comments. But I honestly believe that could be one of the biggest red pills men get. It was definitely was one of the biggest ones that I got. And I'm not going to say, and I'll make a separate video to this, and I won't, I won't dilute this video with that thought. That isn't what gave me a whole bunch of red pills and forced them down my throat. My experiences with women after I was separated in the dating market and womanizing and just seeing the worst of behaviors, especially of women in their 30s and, and early 40s, you wouldn't believe me if I told you, okay? I'm just saying that, that those were the biggest red pills I ever got. You compare that to the sacrifices that a man makes in a relationship. A man will sacrifice everything for a woman he loves. He will sacrifice his life. He will even sit through episodes of The Bachelorette just to make you happy. <laughs> what funny. have you done for your man lately? When was the last time any woman put a man's needs ahead of her own as a self-sacrificing action? I cannot even think of one. Now, there may be some, and I'm generalizing here, and I realize that, and there are some human beings who just happen to be female who have really good characteristics. Yep. However, for the most part, most women are not very empathetic, and I would go so far as to say they even lack basic human compassion in most cases, especially if- I'm gonna stop him there, absolutely. He's spot on. As I said, I've only ever met two or three women that I look back on and go, wow, they were, someone of high integrity and virtue. So that's going to tell you something. It's not all women, but guys, you tell me your experiences. Have you had women in your life that you've had to look at for long term in your life? Because as we know, women can be chameleons and they can really put on the, the act and and really be the perfect little lady for you and be awesome and love all the things you love and do all the things that you love and uh, be nice to you and be nice to your family and your friends and get along perfect with you when they're trying to get in, when they're trying to get that commitment. But guys, tell me when you've been married or in long-term relationships, how selfless a woman is for you. 
on a regular basis? Generally not very. And if you do ask them for something, uh, it's going to be met with sort of childish groans. So that's spot on. It requires them to do something to help another person. Okay, let's move on to competence. Anytime you watch a sitcom these days, you're gonna see the man in the show um, represented by some buffoon, someone who doesn't know what he's doing, makes a mess out of everything. The women in his show just have to put up with him. You know, the, the character is this uh, um, guy with two left feet and, and half the intelligence of the average you know, orangutan and God bless those poor women in, in his life. They just have to come in and clean up after him and make everything right again. Nothing could be further from the truth. In fact, all of my experience has been exactly the opposite of that. Women screw up their lives like no one else could. And they're neurotic to an extreme. Yeah, absolutely. And it's not every woman. I know John's not saying it's every woman. Because I, guys, as I'll always say, I never operate in absolutes because that's where you lose an argue, argument instantly. And that's... Feminine behaviors to say all things to this and all people that, you know, all men are trash, rah, rah, rah. Okay. So it's good to have balance uh, and a balanced argument based on evidence. He makes a fantastic point here. I'm not going to go on about all the TV shows. No, we all know that. We all know that, you know, you got uh, Homer Simpsons and all that sort of guys, and that's what men are Barney Gumbles and shit like that. The point he makes about women having. Live. So, but to the to the front of the world, they they come out as so they'll have this perfect organized life. But we, especially, I'm going to talk from a perspective of a lot of women that I got to know uh, dating in my 30s. Their lives. It doesn't it doesn't matter how professional they are or how good a job they have or how well put together they look. The majority of their lives are absolute dumpster fires behind the scenes. Huge piles of debt, lifetimes of bad choices, dating traumas from spending too much time on dating apps, dating too many men. Uh, you, the, the list goes on. Just really bad, horrible decisions. Um, one of the big ones that I noticed was women spending a whole bunch of time studying, you know, gender science or political studies or arts, a university, and then having not having jobs that don't have anything to do with what they studied and being at almost entry level or just above entry level when they've spent $100,000 on a university degree. So just dumpster fires based on horrible experiences. They're the ones that need to be saved, not men. They're the ones that need, they're the ones on the dating apps looking for the guy to come in and, and be the superannuation policy, the insurance policy, uh, the safety net for a lifetime of horrible choices where they jump on. They want a guy who's got his stuff together. They want a guy who's got a mortgage and a house. They want a guy who's got everything locked down. Mr. Safe, Mr. Pay the Bills. That's who these women are looking for. This guy is spot on. As a man, I cannot tell you how many messes I have cleaned up by a woman or women who have completely emoted themselves into a psychological shutdown where they have just can't do anything. They just paralyze themselves with fear and anxiety and um, incompetence. And sometimes even completing the most simple task ends up turning into a crisis of national level you know it's just ridiculous how <laughs> that, incompetent how they can be that. now how there are things that. they can be good at you know if you need your sock drawer organized you need a woman there's no question about it but if you need to get a mortgage finance you don't want to talk to a woman nine times out of ten she does not know what to do if you if you've got a financial crisis on your hands chances are a woman is not going to know what to do if spot on like once again i'm going to try not to interject too much this is a bit going to be a bit of a longer video but he's just got some great points especially around finances. Most women, there are some women that are really great. I'm going to keep saying that. Majority, I'm going to say 95% of women are horrible with money, okay? Horrible with investing money. Uh, horrible with managing money. It comes in one hand, all right? You get paid on the whatever day, whatever day of the week or month, and I've already thought about it. Amazon packages, fucking you name it, come all the time. That was my experience a lot of the time. Women, whenever I hear a guy say, oh, I just hand my pay over to my wife and she manages the household, my stomach just twists. Women and money do not go together. Now, some men are horrible with money, absolutely. 
But for the most part, men have a burden on them to be good with money and manage money because there's no other option. No one's going to bail him out. No one's going to give him uh, a get out of jail free card if he fucks up. So the onus is on the man to generally think long term with his money and try and make the best decisions possible. And yeah, there are plenty of dickheads out there who waste it, but it'd be far less than what a woman. Okay, I want to make another point. Guys, if you've been married or have a long-term girlfriend and you've talked about making an investment, you might have wanted to buy some crypto five years ago or buy a house 10 years ago, whatever it is, and you discussed it with your girlfriend, wife at the time. And guys were so, oh, fuck that. You have to, you're in, you're in a relationship, right? So it affects both of you, especially if you're covered by common law. You can't just go and do shit. The reaction most of the time isn't a growth mindset. It isn't looking uh, blue sky and thinking about the possibilities of what can be. It generally is a reaction of fear. It's scared, okay? The, the, the safety net is at risk. You're putting money in something and it's not guaranteed to go up and it's a chance it could go down or it could be wiped out. And there's a lot of fear. So guys, if you resonate with that point when you've had discussions about finances or trying to explain a financial strategy to a woman and you just, you just cannot get through no matter how even simple it may be, Put it in the comments. I'd love to hear it. All right, guys, I'm going to be about halfway through. For enjoying this video today, uh, please sub to the channel, aiming for 10K subs in the short term, so your support is greatly appreciated. And the best way to support me, guys, is to watch the videos through as long as possible. The watch time is what gets me pushed out to a wider audience. So once again, never going to bullshit you and say, oh, stay to the end for this awesome content or whatever. Just stick around as long as you can or leave it running in the browser and mute me if, you, if you've you know, had enough of my bullshit. That really helps me out. All right, let's get on with it. If you've got a medical crisis on your hands, chances are you're going to have to take control of that situation. If you've got a, uh, um, a, uh, a physical threat, yeah, women aren't going to be able to help you with that either. Um, your car breaks down. Women, no idea, completely clueless, don't even know how to ask the right questions. Um, let's see. Make, even making travel arrangements, my God, yeah. One time we showed up at the airport at 8 a.m. to take our, our flight down to Orlando or whatever to go on a Disney cruise. Yeah, we got there t 12 hours early. Really? Yeah. yeah we That's a great thing. That's a really good point. Now, in my experience, the girls that I've ever been in serious relationships with or married to, actually, they were very good at that um, logistical element of booking and scheduling trips and itineraries and that so i can't really vouch for that but i can understand the uh the one point that he's getting across is um the anxiety of getting to airports early every time i've gone on a trip you've had to get there like three four five hours early and you sit around in the lobby um or after you've checked in you're sitting around for three or four hours on your phone or whatever it is when you could have maybe cut it a little bit closer so that's one point i do resonate with our flight was booked for 8 p.m guess who did that mm -hmm. Thankfully, the lady at the, at the ticket counter was kind enough because she could see my wife was crying because we were all standing there with our suitcases 12 hours early and she put us on. So I'm going to skip ahead to sex. All right, let's get into sex. Sex is a great, great topic. The modern woman likes to believe that it is only fair and equal that she can be as promiscuous as a man. And this is such a brilliant one, okay? You guys, it's like you don't even understand the way the world works. It's so funny. Um, so a man has to work for sex. That is spot on. And I've had a lot of women say to me, especially out on the dating apps over time, and you get friendly with women, they say, oh, only guys just want to have sex. So I get with guys and it's really easy. All they do is they jump on the apps and they bang chicks and disappear. No, no, no. You're going for literally the top, the top of the top guys who can pull that off and you're one of their victims. And so they see the male experience through the experience of getting pumped and dumped by a Chad or a Bricey. Not your average man who has to work hard like a little plankton, a little plankton at the bottom of the river, you know, getting some crumbs. Um, the ducks in the duck park, you know, and you throw the bread, the bread in, all right? And they're all going for the same chick. They don't see that. They see the guy who's well put together, the one that all the girls want, slaying it, right? I've always found that very interesting, and I try to explain it and say, no, 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 you're, you're seeing it from the perspective of a man who is a very unique person who can have all the girls chasing after him and crying, why is he playing up on them? If you've, heard, if you've had that comment and you can resonate and back that up, put it in the comments. Women 
do not give sex freely to men all the time. Now, maybe some men get it freely. You know, I'm sure there are some guys out there getting it freely, but for the vast majority of us, yeah, we've got to have some game. You know, we're going to have to actually put together a plan to seduce a woman. And it's going to take some time and energy. It's going to be hard. You know, it, it, takes some, it takes some effort. A woman just needs to say yes to any man. If you're even vaguely good looking, most men will have sex with you. Jess, generous John, a vaguely good looking, uh, most 99% of men will have sex with a, a, a vaguely good looking woman when they're horny. Right, they've got a huge throb and heart on. What I've noticed is guys are filth. So even in their 20s, maybe even 30s, because I definitely was, I was a bad man right when I was in my 20s. I was walking around with a loaded shotgun 24 seven. They needed to be uh, focused on a target. It wouldn't matter what it was. You could um, I always make this joke, but it's true. Men are filth. Men will have sex with retards, fat chicks, smelly chicks, midgets, buddy. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Like a bin, a bin, a bin with the bag, at the, you know, in the local park, and it's got the um, the bin juice in the bottom, and it's warm on a forty degree day. He's probably going to put his cock in that if he's horny. <laughs> so it's never, it's never comparable, especially when you do get women, especially older women, who brag about having sex with younger men and that they've still got it no no you, you're literally a human flat flashlight like, like it's the easiest thing in the world for you to do that and especially if your target is men in their 20s you, there's no effort involved you just literally tell the guy to come he's there there's no rears nothing involved there's no pick up there's no nothing it's a great point on that most of the time so you guys can probably have sex i'm guessing 80 to 90% of the time, with 80 to 90% of the men that you come across. Well, 99% with 95%, I reckon. Wow. Uh, men might be able to have sex with like 2% or 3% of the women that he comes across. If that, that's, that may be an even a high number. That may be even a really high number. So you being promiscuous all the time versus us being promiscuous all the time gets completely different results. <laughs> and I'll be honest with you, Men generally don't like it if they're going to get, if they're looking at a girl to get married, if that girl's got a high body count, like if she's been sleeping around, guys don't, don't like that, you know? And it kind of goes back to that whole exchange thing where, you know, um, when we get into a relationship, there's a certain transactional nature to it. And a man who is going to spend money and seduce you and take you out and really, really, really give you the princess treatment that you like so much so that he can win your approval and in that approval also have the opportunity to have sex with you. Well, why should he go through all of that if you're just giving it away down on the street corner sometimes? Like you just because- That's uh, spot on. I think that's a lot of the point that I talk about. Like women are just filth. Uh, dating to me, dating doesn't mean going out on nice dates and you're going with one gentleman at a time. He's taking you down to the theatre and you dress up nicely. He's got his suit on, you know, like the James Bond suit with the black pants and the white jacket and she's got a nice gown on. No, no, no. Dating is going out for a drink somewhere and then just fucking getting it on in the car somewhere or in a park somewhere up against a wall behind a Chinese restaurant somewhere. Especially if they're going out with these really hot guys, the guys that they really want. They'll do what they got to do to try and lock the guy down which is lead with sex. Like women have way more sex than men. Dating is fucking. That's what I call it. Dating is not this whole relationship thing. When you say, oh, women, oh, yeah, I'm a dating expert. No, you're getting pumped in the back of the VN expert. Like there's no expertise to dating for a woman. You've got to be there. Men do all the work and they come up with these, with all these strategies and stuff. That's why I make a fun of all that stuff on my channel because it's just ridiculous. There's none of that effort is even required. And all the stuff that they say is bad. But when it comes to sex, what a lot of guys don't understand is even the girl that you've got a huge crush on, like most of the time, okay, if you're okay, put, put yourself in a scenario and you've had a real big crush on a woman and she's single, okay, and uh, she might work at the local uh, coffee shop where you get your coffee or the supermarket on the register, or whatever it is, where, wherever you've seen a girl and you just started getting all gaga over her. You bet your bottom dollar she has been railed and been very slutty for another guy in the past. She's, in, in, most of the time. Most of the time. I'm going to say all, but most of the time. I can tell you from I'm the guy who was doing that. 
they're not sugar and spice and all things nice. And I love trying to bang this point into people because I live the life that many men don't live and don't see. Yeah, some guys might give it a tilt and they give it a short tilt for a while and they bang a few chicks here and there and they get off the market, they get married or whatever it may be, they stop or, or whatever it may be. But I lived it for 15 years and I can tell you even the most innocent, nice looking girls, they are the worst when it comes to that. But the thing is with women and men, men like to brag, especially young men like to brag about their conquest because it's a hard thing to do. They like to laugh, tell the boys a story, rah, rah, rah. Women hide it. Women actively hide it, play it down, cloak it. <laughs> yeah, it's just, I could go on for days on this exact point. You're out with the girls, you make a big night of it, and you come home with some stranger. Yeah, guys don't want to be with you if that's your way of living. If you're having sex with... Um, with guys that you don't have relationships with, yeah, that's you, you're a one night stand kind of girl, you're a hookup girl. Yeah, guys don't want to be with you. We just don't. We don't want to marry you. We don't want you in our lives. We don't even want to be around you. And in fact, we basically think you're disgusting. Except that, like most men, we will have sex with you. We will. We'll add to your body count. But we will. Yeah, he's a monster hunter. Good old John. Good on you, John. But that makes a really good point. Men are going to be very um, non discerning when it comes to who they have sex with. But more so, look, I'm not going to say all guys. A lot of guys um, uh, get entrapped with women they should have no business doing because they're lonely or they don't understand the nature of women and believe everything that women tell them. But most men, yeah, they're going to add to a woman's body count, but they're never going to take them out. And you see a lot of these TikToks. Oh, he was good enough to have sex with me, but he won't be my boyfriend. Exactly right, because you are doing that with multiple men. Men aren't stupid, especially men who are able to have sex with women. They're a bit more mature, okay? Um, they get sex on the regular from women off dating apps. We know what goes on. We know what you're doing. You can't lie about it. And that's the one thing that puts men off, dating women who have been around the block, especially early 30s, late 20s, even mid-20s and above, if you're looking for something like a marriage or something serious. And that's why there's a rhetoric around trying to meet women uh, as early as possible to because there's least damage, okay? Now, I don't know how accurate that's going to be these days because you've got to think about women are generally pretty active, even from high school years. Like out there, you hear about it or you might have, might, you might have partaken in that stuff in your past. So you know what goes on if you, you know, you're, you're someone who can get girls, especially at a young age. They're, they're active from like teenage years through to 25. How many guys do you think that they've had unless they've had a boyfriend the whole time? Like minimum, minimum double digits, okay? So I think that whole argument about getting them young and getting them to be a virgin, very, very rare these days because a lot of them have dating apps. They've grown up with dating apps, Snapchat, Instagram, like unlimited access to men. I have no issue with that. Sluts are good. Like, I'm not marrying anyone. I'm not marrying any of them. I have, I'm not judging. Do what you want. Like, sex is good. Men need to have sex. Women need to have sex. Whatever. But there is definitely... That is one double standard that I'll say of men. Is that we love to root them and bang them and bang them in the VN. But when they do that with too many guys or we do that with them, then we don't want to get on with them. And it's an interesting uh, thing that's based in our genes. I really can't understand why it is... It's more or less that they're tainted. It's like almost like rancid meat once you start to realize that. It's like a genetic thing. It's like you get a smell of death on them, okay? Not take you home to mom, just FYI. Not going home to mom, hmm. that's for sure. Caregiving. Now, it has been declared that women are really good at giving care. And in my experience, I, mean, I have seen some really good nurses out there, but I've also seen really good man nurses. Um, but then you're getting paid for that. So I think this is a really great video. I might stop it there so we don't go on for too long, guys. But he, he has quite a few really great points. If you want to see the full thing, I'll put the link in the video description. Go over there. Give him a view. Give him a like, a comment. Get him pushed out there as well. I think he's doing really good, genuine content. So uh, thanks, John, for this original content. See you guys in the next one. Cheers.